Can I just have a big round of applause, please? Thank you, thank you. Um, first of all, big shout out to all the previous presenters, uh, James, Stu, uh, Martin, and also Tom. Definitely enjoyed your content. Uh, my, my presentation will be relatively lighthearted, so grab a drink, sit back, relax, uh, and get ready for what comes after the afternoon tea, because my friend Bart will talk about everything, uh, sweep dialogue uh, version two. <laughs> anyway, awesome. So as Marcus said, my name is Lynette. Uh, I'm from the GEM Sydney team. Incredibly excited to be here for two reasons. One is my very first presentation uh, at a conference. So thank you, Tony, if he's around, for inviting me to the event. Uh, second reason is I actually spent six years in Melbourne before I moved to Sydney. So Melbourne feels like my second home. It's, it's always great to be back. Uh, my talk today is Mission Possible. You've been asked to manage Max. What's next? Um, before I get into why this topic and what's in it, uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself because when I was shamelessly marketing my own session out there uh, to all the community members, some of them actually asked me, so what do you do, Lynette? Um, some of my colleagues have warned me just how much the crowd loves memes. So here we go, a quick what I do by memes. I'm an enterprise customer success manager. This is what my friends think I do. Um, they think I'm either customer support or I'm kind of a middleman, which means when customers come to me, I just redirect them to our GEM support team. What about my mom? Oh, well, actually, she doesn't care what I do as long as I talk to her every weekend. Media kind of has no idea what I do. And product thinks I just fill up the complaint box. Oh, just kidding. Customer success and product teams are my best friends. I think of myself as a firefighter uh, because I, I, I'm called to put out fires in my customers' environments from time to time. But most of the time, I feel incredible with what I really do as a customer success manager. Um, because to be honest, all success managers at Genf, we, we truly want our clients to succeed with Apple. And we want to see successful clients so badly that we eat success for breakfast. And very specifically, we skim milk. Tom, did you hear that? It's not oat milk, it's skim milk. And this is what my day-to-day -day kind of looks like uh, when it's relatively organized. So I juggle a number of things uh, in no particular order. The customer calls, where I, I help my busy customers stay on top of changes, the Apple changes, uh, the changes in the GenF ecosystem, or I provide them guidance to uh, the challenges that they want to solve. The internal meetings, where I sync up information with, uh, with the wider team just to stay on top of all the customer projects, what they wanted, and also their needs. The ongoing product deep learning, oh man, every time a new version is released for each product, we go into the deep end, we learn about what problems and new features will solve, you know, how are they going to be used in different real-world scenarios and definitely the technical how-tos. So why am I here today? Um, well, if we look back a few years, there have been quite a few monumental moments for Apple. 2020 November, Apple released the M1-based machines. Um, major processor change since 2005. You know, the great features and the, the performance Apple Silicon comes with really makes that a great choice of device for you know, the next generation of employees. November 2021, Apple launched the beta version of Business Essentials, followed by an official launch um, in March, so, so, sort of end of March 2022. Now the launch of this service really raised the tide um, of device management for everybody uh, and grew market awareness significantly. Start of 2023, Apple announced an all-time high install base that crossed 2 billion active devices. So all of these tell us that the adoption of Apple technology is definitely growing, and so is the community. Um, who is in the community sort of less than 12 months? 
Thanks, Nindi. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Um, so as an employee of Jenf and also a community member who was once very new to Apple, I want to share some thoughts and also some stories to help those who are in a similar situation as I was many years ago um, to make that mission of managing Apple technology, especially the Macs, possible. So whether you're new to end user compute management um, or you're new to the Apple ecosystem as a Windows veteran, we truly want to make sure your journey is successful. Now, before I get into the stories, I really wanted to show you some of the behind the scenes stuff. So when I submitted my, my presentation topic mid-February, I was incredibly ambitious. I thought I was gonna design the most interesting talk and also the prettiest and coolest slide deck. Um, and Tony, the organizer, he might just go as far as giving me an award for being the best presenter. And then March kind of crept in, we got so busy at work, um, and by the time I finally got to the preparation, it was already last Wednesday. Man, the, the final schedule was out, my stress level was through the roof, couldn't chicken out anymore. But then I thought, you know, everybody out there has been raving about this chat GPT, so will this intelligent AI tool give me about it? You know, I was a lot more demanding than Martin for sure, because um, I was expecting ChatGPT to give me a whole sketch, not just a definition. So I actually put my presentation topic in ChatGPT. Um, and let's look at what the results look like. I'm new to managing Max. What's next? Ah, uh, you know. Welcome to the world of managing Max. I like it, sounds really warm, welcoming. Here are a few steps you can take to get started. Familiarize yourself with the Macs. Know about the features, know about the capabilities, learn how to navigate the user interface, settings and files, great point. Understand device management. That's absolutely true if you're managing module Macs uh, and you want to understand MDM so that you can enroll your device into it to manage the settings, the apps, the configurations, what have you. Definitely a great way to automate things and scale. Explore third-party software. I mean, who doesn't like tools that make our jobs easier? You know, the tools that can help you deploy software, manage updates, uh, and automate tasks. We want them all. Learn about the security. Well, macOS is generally considered more secure than other operating systems, but you still want to take steps to protect your fleet from, from threats. For example, you know, some simple things you can do will be Stay up to date with uh, security updates, uh, use strong passwords, and even consider some specialized endpoint security tools. Join the community. So many communities out there dedicated to Mac management, uh, and joining one is definitely a good way to learn from others and, and um, share ideas. And good luck with the journey. How does everyone like it? I think it's a pretty impressive answer, isn't it? Awesome, so here finally comes my, my version, version of the story. Um, for, for the more experienced Mac admins out there, uh, I'm gonna talk about some non-technical stuff. I hope that some of the stories will resonate with you and even inspire you to share a few words about your own uh, at the very end. So the three things I wanna touch on uh, for those studying in Mac management are the right mindset. Um, second, finding resources and allies and getting help from vendors. Um, you know, the good thing is learning about Mac management is no different from picking any new skills. You know, you're going to have the right, mess, uh, the right mindset to, to, be, to be driven to learn about new things. You're going to go through the resources uh, to understand the differences and then pick up the new knowledge. And then when you get stuck, you kind of reach out to the community, ask help, uh, rinse and repeat. Alrighty, now let's break it down a bit. So myself actually uh, came to the Mac world and also the community as a Windows user. When I started my job at Genf, I 
start straight away in the deep end, really trying to understand all the individual techni technical tasks. Uh, some of the things I can still remember would be, you know, the LDAP integration, everything about policy deployment uh, and all things software packaging. I was definitely um, a little confused to say the least. I wish that someone could have shown me the bigger picture of, you know, Mac management, the challenges around it, the critical events that actually need to be managed, the, the business impact of certain things, and, and of course, the beauty of prioritization. Now, many years into my role, uh, I wanted to tell my younger self and those who are in a similar situation to let me sw switch your mind to the high level first. Now, this is something I actually found on our website. Uh, this is called the, uh, the GEMF Beginner Guide, uh, which covers the MDM fundamentals, some of the critical lifecycle management stages, and also the, the programs and services you might need to set up a good Mac management program. My, my favorite part of the guide is it not only talks about the, the technical how tos or the technical what to do's, but it also covers the very high level what to do and the why's, um, which I think you know, uh, is a really good bigger picture of what's essential to run a smooth Mac management program and also where to start both short term and long term. Now, obviously this is just one of the materials so many more out there uh, that can help you gain a high level overview. The second mindset I want to talk about is um, acknowledging and embracing the differences. And this is something for our friends out there who are maybe already specialized in a different ecosystem or just a different Apple platform and have taken on the responsibilities of managing Macs either by choice or being voluntold. People change jobs all the time, and um, as a vendor, we work with Mac admins, uh, new Mac admins from all backgrounds all the time. And what we found is having an open mind to acknowledge and embrace the changes is really half the success. Once you have the right mindset, uh, the rest becomes a lot easier. So maybe your organization is trying to uh, Manage Macs just the same way uh, like they did on Windows to achieve that operational efficiency. For example, you know, binding all the Macs or, or deploying things to AD-based user groups. And if you know that Mac OS is actually a very different operating system and requires its own management approaches, you might want to put in the effort to actually learn about and also adopt Apple best practices. I mean, which ultimately helps the organization achieve much better efficiency and greater user experience. And maybe you used to manage iOS and you really enjoyed the, uh, the simplicity of it uh, in digital teaching and learning. For example, you can, you can easily hide all the applications on students' iPads in classroom. And now that you've transitioned into Mac management, you want to apply the same on the Macs and you wish to achieve the same user experience. Well, the, the MDM framework on iOS is actually very different from that on the Mac OS, which is why the, the management of either platform um, is separate in all MDMs. I just wanted to provide a couple very common examples here to uh, highlight the differences. Uh, for example, on the iOS side, your primary um, source for applications will just be the Mac App Store. However, on the Macs, you'll be looking at uh, a variety of channels outside of the Mac store. For example, the, uh, the, uh, the open source platforms and also your different vendor websites. Another common example would be on the Mac side as compared to on the iOS, there is much more room for customization. Uh, you can run the scripts, you can use all sorts of third-party tools to do fancy things. You know, the sky is the limit. Well, it's fantastic. You can do so much more on the, on the Macs as IT. Um, I think the opportunity itself also presents a, a very different learning curve. So when you understand and um, accept such differences, um, it actually helps you reset expectation, not just your own, but also you know, the expectation of business stakeholders around you. 
on what is and what is not achievable. And then you can make a more suitable plan for your device management and also ongoing learning. Lastly, if there is one thing I wish myself could have adopted quicker, it will have to be uh, this one. Control, control C, Control V is now the Command C, Command V. Third mindset is to simply step out of comfort zone. I know this is so much easier said than done because um, it is just our human nature to want to stay within our comfort zone and also stick to what we already know of. It's, it's quite inevitable for organizations with um, UEM expertise to want to consolidate all the operating systems under one platform when Mac management skills are scarce. Um, but if we look at how far the market has actually gone, it's come such a long way to actually realize the value of adopting a best of breed solution for each ecosystem. And, and we really want to constantly think forward instead of looking backwards. As Grace Hopper once said, the most um, damaging phrase in the language is, we've always done it this way. So we want to encourage those who already possess uh, the expertise of UEM solutions to come out of the comfort zone and learn something new. Um, think about the, the new M1 and also M2 machines. There is no better time to start working with Max. We definitely understand that when you are relatively new on this journey on your own, things can get a little hard from time to time, but um, don't feel that it's, it's your own job. Uh, you're actually supported by the community, by all the resources and events. Now, I want to take a bit of a break from talking. So instead of me talking through all the resources, I'm going to pop the logo on the screen. Uh, if you know what it is and uh, you've used it in the past, maybe shout it out loud from the crowd uh, and tell everybody else what do you think is the best thing about it. Anyone? And what do you think is the best thing about it? It's free. Fantastic. <laughs> That's it. That's exactly right. Yeah, so the question was, uh, uh, my question was, uh, okay, so the answer was free. That's, that's absolutely right. You don't have to be a Jeff customer to access the content. Uh, you, can, you can do it anytime, completely on demand. What about this one? Anyone seen it before, used it in the past? The traveling tech guy, fantastic. What do you think is the best thing about it? <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. So Tom actually sa said uh, a lot of um, articles on, on uh, some difficult MDM things. Is it also free? It's also free. <laughs> Absolutely. What else? Stu said, saved him from ADFS nightmares. Absolutely true. Uh, this guy has so many great articles about cloud IDP and ADFS challenges. Uh, my personal story, if you want to know everything about File Vault, definitely check it out because he's written numerous articles on how File Vault works across all different versions of macOS. Any quick shout out? <laughs> the flounder, everyone knows, absolutely. Uh, I don't need to say anything about it. If, if Rich Troughton says something is true on the website, you better believe it's true. What about this nice little green icon? Absolutely, Apple said, and what is it for? <laughs> what should you do? What should you do about it? <laughs> Fantastic documentation. Yeah, feedback, documentation, beta testing, everything. Can one of the organizers please shout out what this is and and uh, what is what is the live one all about on Friday? <laughs> anyway, Mike at me in podcast. Uh, not just talks about all the great technologies and cool workflows um, in the Mac ecosystem, but also the voices from those awesome human beings uh, in the ecosystem. 
So a big shout out to Marcus, Tom, and also James. What about this tool? Mr. Macintosh, Script, scripting OSX. Um, I feel, you know, if you want to keep up with the latest in the Mac world at a much deeper technical, technical level, look no further. This tool will be your go-to. <laughs> Everybody says they don't know. Gen Nation, that's where you ask questions about Apple IT management, still the biggest Apple IT management forum in the world. Um, the forum actually went through an overhaul to modernize the look and feel, uh, and there's now a dedicated space for our community members to post in-depth technical thoughts. Check it out. All right, so that was a lot of online resources. What if you feel like you want to take a break from consuming the virtual content, and you want to get out there and meet people, where do you go? Good news alert, Jeff Nation Live is coming to ANZ. Yay! We, we, we used to call them uh, the, the road shows, and now they're called Jeff Nation Live. So it's completely free, and uh, we want to see you, uh, I want to see all of you there. Has anyone actually registered? That's awesome. Um, there will be a slide with all the barcodes at the very end. Uh, if you haven't registered, come, come over and scan it. Genf Nation Live, um, annual Genf Nation user conference this year is hosted towards the end of uh, September in Texas. Local Mac admin meetups uh, in Sydney and Melbourne. Uh, if you're in either city, you're quite lucky. You can meet with all your peers. And definitely XWorld conference and DC. Okay, I'm going to quickly race through all the, the content. Um, so while we are on the topic of community, I, I do want to share some additional thoughts. Um, you know, we've talked about what the community can offer when we need something, but uh, what can we all do to keep the, the community healthy and growing so that more people become successful? Easiest thing to do, be polite wherever we can. Um, those community-based open source solutions, they are actually created in people's own spare time. So we want to pay respect to what they've done to help all of us be successful. Next thought is be collaborative. Uh, when I was new to the community, I, I thought the only way to contribute would be to publish some code. But uh, then I realized there's so many more smaller things we can all do to, uh, to contribute uh, back to the community. You know, things like if you see a solution uh, on a forum and it actually helped you, please leave a comment to validate it. So when other people see it, they know it actually worked. Um, if you have been using a, an open source solution and the, the, the author of it is trying to sort of uh, upgrade it and is looking for some user feedback, definitely chime in and uh, provide your side of the stories. Last one is on top of providing construction feedback when something doesn't work, also provide some positive feedback when something does work. <laughs> Um, we're all human beings, we feel more motivated uh, when our effort is, is appreciated by other people. Okay, if you have a challenge at hand, you've done all your homework uh, through all the resources, you still feel a little stuck, uh, don't forget that the vendors are also there to support and help you. So you should engage with them. Okay, but why? I am an engineer, I, I know everything. Well, no doubt, but um, we all know the, the ecosystem has evolved and expanded just so much. Um, and it's, it's getting really challenging for, for us to know everything at a deep level. Especially as Mac admins, you are expected to make all things work on the Macs. And you know the scope just goes way beyond IT management. You've got the identity, you've got the security, network, different applications integrations, so definitely work with vendors. The second OK But Why moment is we don't have issues, so we don't need to talk to you. Well, you know, if you actually connect with the vendors every now and then, you might get some different perspectives and fresh ideas um, because we don't know what we don't know. The last OK But Why moment is you're simply just time poor and uh, vendor engagement feels like a huge job. Um, 
I want to assure you that in most cases is actually much uh, a much smaller commitment uh, than it actually feels. So maybe you're trying to roll out some changes to the max. If you pick up the uh, pick up the phone, call your vendor site contact, uh, walk them through what you're trying to do. You might actually get some great tips that help you save time. How much time do I have left? Five minutes already. Um, if anyone is keen to hear about a story that has it all, you know, that has all the, the, the reasons, okay, but why moments I mentioned, maybe come and talk to me afterwards. Uh, I'll share that with you. So to wrap up my talk, I know I'm pressured for time. I uh, wanted to give you a quick update on our GenF A and Z team. So the size of our team has actually tripled since 2019. Uh, we now have 26 amazing people in our wider sales team. Uh, including the, the commercial education sales guys, sales engineer like Marcus, and also consulting engineer like Dan, um, plus uh, a few more. 13 people from technical support team looking after this, the, the online chat, email support, and also enterprise support. Eight members from my team, customer support team, and I'll show you their pretty faces in the next slide. Uh, six members from the, the professional service teams. So they look after both service delivery when you have some complex problems to solve and also all the certification training in region. Three members from cloud operation, they make sure your cloud environment uh, run as smoothly as possible. Um, and lastly, we have two from the product team specializing in all things app version control and patch management. Thanks, Justin. <laughs> Alrighty, so this is our diverse and amazing customer success team in GenF A and Z. Um, a gen really committed in helping you succeed with Apple. So one of the resources we offer post sales is a customer success management. Uh, these these eight people work really hard day in day out to make sure you get what you need to get uh, your business outcomes by GenF. So if you haven't worked with Genf, being a Genf customer, definitely reach out to us, success at genf.com. And with that, I want to thank you for listening and um, not falling asleep. <laughs>